Okay, folks. So we'll see if we can do a little bit of uh, painting and get somewhere. Uh, this morning we were able to paint, and uh, we got two Hungarian. These two guys were complete this morning. So we haven't sprayed them. We don't want to go out there and do that. It's been uh, kind of a waste of time to just do two. So um, we're going to set them off to the side and we're going to work on the Armadi. I thought you played DBA. What are you doing with Armadi? Oh, that's what these guys are called. The solid blade element is called Armadi. And these are Polax armed, fully armored guys are considered a solid unit of blade so they're a mandatory element in this army and uh yeah we're going to get to painting these now these are almost all covered in metal except for their accoutrements and um their pole arms as well so we'll get to that uh Doing that in a second, and let's get this more centrally located, and like so. All right. Now, after this, we're definitely going to have to uh, put some black basing on this stuff. You know, we're going to go ahead and do this now because uh, I'm out of figures after this. I've uh, I don't have any more uh, to paint. So let's um, let's show you guys what the surface primer can do. And you have here, kind of waiting in the wings, and uh, they'll be up next. All right, um, let's make sure we get an appropriate brush. This one should do fine. And that way you guys can see what this stuff's all about. Now I don't want to. I don't want to mess up the the wet palette that I have here for that. Let's see if there's any of this stuff sitting here at the top. Yeah, there's some up here. So um, let's see, what can I use? What kind of a container we got? Be right back. I'm gonna go commandeer something. Okay, we got something semi-disposable we're gonna use. And non-porous. So we're gonna mix this stuff up. And we'll use this end. Three drops ought to do it. This stuff goes a long way. So we're gonna just take our spearman here and just, we're not gonna cut it with anything. We're just gonna put this on here now. 
this spreads extremely well. And I just saw boo-boo. Let's go take care of this so we don't have to deal with this later. And I did clean these guys with flash, but I guess I missed this spot. Okay. This is acrylic, but it spreads as well as if it was an enamel that's thinned down. Okay, there's one spearman done. This covers very, very well. I'll put this here though. Straight from the bottle. You don't have to thin it or anything. It says it's polyurethane. Now, I don't know what the hell that means. Um, but... It is acrylic. This is acrylic polyurethane, so. Has no smell to it at all. I'm not actually sure if you could thin this if you wanted to what, or what you would thin it with, but I'm leaving it alone. So this was three drops of this, and I bet I'm going to have enough here to prime these eight figures. So if that's the case, this $20 bottle goes a long way. I figured I'd give this... A a chance. I'm not sure where, how I came across this, but Yahoo makes a lot of products that I've actually never tried. I've just tried their paints and, uh, you know, I haven't tried their water effects or any of their terrain type of things. I've been really happy with the Liquitex, so um, I'm really not looking to improve my, change my terrain how I do it any because uh, I'd have to um, redo my whole method of how to do terrain and it wouldn't look even, so... But this is worth a shot, especially since the last time I primed some figures, it was kind of a pain in the butt. Um, my Acryl that I was using gums up a lot. Um, and 
it thickens really fast in the bottle. It must have a really poor bottle design. And uh, I was using the flat black from uh, the Model Master Acryl, and it's no longer carried at Hobby Lobby, which is the only place that I could get these kind of paints here in town. So, and the enamel is fine, except it's very, very shiny, even though it's supposed to be flat, um, which isn't a big deal, except it's very distracting when you're trying to uh, make sure you didn't miss a spot. So this stuff dries pretty flat and, um, and it goes on superb. It's very, gets in all the little spots and so far so good, so. Joe, paint, paint, paint. Not much today, had to do with some other things, but. We'll get some in the morning and some in the evening. So this is what you missed if you missed the uh, the unboxing is this Viejo Surface Primer is the primer. So um, using that and um, really happy with it. It goes a long way. That's the fourth one. Mm. Very successful painting weekend so far, so. So far, both of the items that I've bought from Vallejo and these big, was it 200 milliliters? Yeah. Not sure how many ounces that is. Is it six ounces? Well, this looks like a lot more than six ounces. It's like a... Now, these spearmen will be, will all have, um, the design on their shields will all be the same for the four. So there'll be four that will have all the same designs on the shields, and the other four will have all the same designs on the shields. So, they're going to be in units, these guys. Because these guys aren't nobility, they don't have their own... Heraldry, so. Will we have enough with three dots to finish these other three guys? I think so. It's going to be close, but.
two left. Yeah, we're not going to make it. Let's have one, one drop. Zero smell on this stuff. Might as well be water. I bet it has a taste though. One fellow left. Yeah, this stuff goes on really, really well. that we're going to go ahead and rinse this fast
Well, that took longer than expected. But hopefully I can be awake now. Iced coffee. Oh, you still got somebody here. That's got to be Joe. You knew I was coming back. There you go. Iced coffee, baby. Yeah, I don't mind going to sleep early, but 8.30 is way too freaking early. That's just stupid. All right. Mm. All right, here's the Armadi. Now, we still have some of the steel from this morning. Drink it up. No kidding. I'll have another one. Ah. No sugar. Just cold and caffeine. All right, we need to get our friend, also known as the other. Yeah, and I went ahead today. I did not have the right war wagon, so I ordered them today from uh, eBay. So they get here next Monday. I'm not. I'm not picking them up on Monday. <laughs> Hopefully, they get here on Tuesday. We'll probably break free and start working on those as soon as they come in because it's kind of a unique thing to this army. So, um, and I did do one flag this morning, so that was cool. I enjoyed doing that. It took me a couple hours to put that together. We'll print those on a laser printer. They can look fabulous. We're just going to touch when we um, when we put the um, what the hell is this stuff called? Oh, the surface. So the only things that so far that I've tried that Vallejo makes that I did not like is certain paints. And those certain paints I didn't like were ones that I suspect have been sitting on someone's shelf for a really long time. Um, and they just didn't, didn't mix up well. And it's only a handful of the, I don't know what, okay, how many, all right. How many we got? We got one, two, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. There's about seventeen in the full one, so that's thirty-four. Okay, seventeen. Uh, one, two. I'll call it fifteen. There's your margin of error. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I can't do that complicated math no more. Uh, well, every four is 60. So 120, I guess I got about 100 and, um, every four is 60. And I have three sets of four, 180. So I've got just under 200 colors and I probably have maybe six that don't work well. Maybe, maybe no more than 10 for sure. And I think they were just, they're colors that uh, you wouldn't normally use like that ice yellow and stuff like that. They don't, uh, they don't perform great. So um, Brookhurst Hobbies uh, shelf for a long time when some idiot from uh, Florida decided to order some and they were probably glad to be rid of them because nobody had ever bought one of those before. So. That's uh, that's my story. So, um, I have a picture somewhere of the shelf that Hobby Lobby has. They don't have the full display. They've got a they've got a display that may have forty colors or sixty colors or something like that. And um, 
I probably should find out which one those are and compare to the ones here and make sure they're still kicking, so. When I cleaned out my room the other day, um, I went through and threw away a bunch of paints that I hadn't touched in 20 years. And um, some of them were old poly S paints. So I had labeled the tops of them. Um, what uh, they were labeled for ships. So I labeled, you know, what, you know, this is the Yokosuka gray as opposed to the other, I don't remember what the other one, uh, what the other ship thing is for the World War II Japanese, but uh, I had color matched them with the color chips that I have. And, um, but I hadn't touched them in so long, they probably wouldn't be very good. And if, you know, I, it's unlikely I would use them, so. Those paints were fine, except the the um, the bottles, the way they seal up is very antiquated as opposed to everything that they have now. So you definitely need a lid that is uh, rubber in some form or another to get a good seal around them. Okay, so we're done with this, the black on that. We've touched all those little spots. Now we can get into the metal. And, uh, you know, I probably could get away with dry brushing and then just dropping some uh, normal oil for it and then coming in and cleaning it up. But I'm not going to do that. I didn't do that with the other, the other uh, troops that I had. So there's no reason to do that with these guys, so. Um, right. Yeah, let's, let's kill this and we can always drink another one. Ice coffee to the rescue. Um, let's move these little guys out of here. These are all the same pose. Uh, it was kind of unintentional. But these guys all have the same pose. It's a round way figure. Um, don't ask me what the code is because I don't remember. We've got some surprises with these guys. So they'll, they'll look, they're going to look different. A little bit. Right now, we're not interested in the pole, in the pole axe at all. We're interested in just painting this armored figure here. Now, I talked about um, there was a, I could take this Hungarian army, and I'm probably going to have to dumb them down when I want to have them fight the Turks. Like if we do like a, a, a match pair type battle. Um, in other words, like the war wagons that the Turks can have, they can also have uh, skirmishers instead of the war wagons. So, you know, I'm going to build the skirmishers for them as well. So they could be dumbed down because the Turks can't deal with, have nothing to deal with the war wagons other than the one artillery piece, which I guess it could be, but they, they have nothing to deal with these guys. Um, these are the uh, the solid blades, and uh, they're mandatory elements. So, um, even though I'm building an army that's typical of say fourteen fifty to fourteen ninety, um, actually, actually for, after fourteen, say fourteen sixty to fourteen ninety, because it's after the siege of Belgrade. Because during the siege of Belgrade, where um, this guy's dad died, Janos Hunyadi, which is also a famous general they didn't have the um they didn't have the um 
war wagon we got. But um, I may go back and retrofit that. But that's going to create a different general. I've, he's got some slightly different uh, coat of arms. So um, but these guys are a mandatory element. You got to have these solid, this one solid unit of blades in the army, regardless of what time period you're doing between, uh, I forget what the list is, is it 1395 to 1526? They always have to have these guys, so. Now this figure is completely armored, including the gloves and everything, except for there's a little bit of his chin showing. So he's sticking out from underneath the uh, salle. So when we do the flesh, we'll probably do the flesh on all four of the figures because it's not very much. You're literally, all they're doing, all you're doing is painting uh, the jaw on all of the figures. So uh, we should be able to do those in a um, assembly line. What rule set are you basing your army for? I'm DBA 3.0, Debellus Antiquitatis. That's what we play. That's pretty much exclusively the only thing I've been playing miniatures wise since 2004. It just. Um, it's real easy to get into. And if you don't have a lot of time, you can get a lot of games in, so. Should be filming another battle tomorrow night. If you check on this channel, there's about, uh, well, I'm just going to round off. There's about 100 battles on here of Debellus and Tiquitatis 3.0. Could check those out, and uh, maybe if you're not familiar with what it is, it'll give you an idea of uh, this fun little game that we've been playing for a while, and uh, and have a really good time with. I gotta go back and see how long it took me to paint my Irish army, but I have a feeling it was about, it was less than two months. I'll have to go back and see when I did my first post on him. I zipped through them pretty quick. Half of it has to do with the fact they're a relatively easy army to paint. And a lot of, and all this, almost all the time I'm painting, I'm filming what I'm painting. So that keeps me on track and, uh, and I'm painting a lot more. I'm not doing any, uh, not much gaming other than that. So no gaming at home anyways. Man, I love these round boy figures. I've actually thought about ordering more in case something happens to the guy that's, I hate to be morbid, but the guy that uh, has the molds now in case something happens to him because he's had health issues for a while. I don't know how severe they are, but you know, he's just kind of doing this as a side job. Now, I'm not sure if he's actually casting them or, um, 
Uh, I'm not sure if he's actually casting them or he just bought a lot of stock and, and he mails them out to people. I honestly don't know. Hopefully he's casting them because that means that, you know, the molds are still kind of in production and, you know, and so forth. So, uh, oh, good. You got the Chimera ready for tomorrow. Slightly bigger battles in Art de la Guerre, roughly 20 or elements. Um, I've watched several videos of Art de la Guerre and, um, It um, and it looks interesting. There's cer certain mechanics that I like in it better, but nobody in this area plays it, and I just can't be the guy that takes point for it. Um, there's got to be like other people interested. Like like I'd play it, but somebody's got to know what the hell they're doing, and uh, and teach me through. Now, I don't. Um, I wish DBA had more. Um, I wish the combat was more complicated. Uh, Art de la Guerre has pips. I know it's handled a little bit different, but um, you know I like the way they handle skirmish. Um, but I don't think. But even with that said, I don't think it fixes the biggest problem the DBA has, and that's that you have to. Uh, you still has the whole alignment thing, and I think that that. What that does is, although it may alleviate other things, it makes it feel. To me, as a player, like um, you're not you're just playing a fun game. You're not playing necessarily a military simulation. It just seems very uh, hokey, you know, and that it's so geometrical. Um, and you know, that's probably the thing I like the least about DBA. Um, but I've seen I've seen people play Art de la Guerre, but um, I know there's a small smaller rule set thing to it, so. Um, but yeah, and the same thing goes for, uh, what's the European one, the Italian one? Um, I have it. I've, I've never played it, but I have it. Um, oh, crap. I have another drink of coffee. <laughs> Impetus. I can read the rules, but it's kind of like in one ear out the other until I like put it in practice. Like this drawing program, I've started making my own flags using um, Adobe. What's it called? It's not Adobe. It's Autodesk Sketchbook. I don't know how to use the damn thing. I just loaded up a. I just loaded up a picture and modified it, and so I can probably start watching some videos on how to use the program, but. I can't, I'm not, I'm not a theory person, so I don't do well with, you know, reading about things and then trying to figure it out. I kind of like have to uh, jump in and get my hands dirty sort of thing. So um, it'd be the same with, with Dark Laguerre. I want to play, you know, several games of it, but. Um, but anyhow, um, yeah, that's the thing with it. And same thing with Mort Mortem at Glorium. Mortem at Glorium makes a Pacto sized. I'd love to try that. It looks like there's a lot of decisions you get to make as a player, but um, that's just too that's just too big of an uphill climb for me to try to figure that out. I have to have somebody that's really interested in it, and because um, that one's uh, maybe sixteen to twenty elements per an army, but. Um, Yeah, the main thing is, is I'm, somebody asked me one time, said, are you more of a painter or a player? And I guess I'm more of a painter. It's not that I don't like to play, but it's just that, you know, the rules are an excuse for me to go out and learn about periods and then play the period, not necessarily learning to play the rules. Uh, some people, like, enjoy rules and how to outsmart other people using them. And, and I just, you know, uh, that, that's... That's not my main appeal. My main appeal is to keep getting excited about uh, these periods and and that kind of stuff. So,
Well, it looks like the coffee's working. I'm waking the hell up because I don't want to go to sleep at 8 o'clock at night. Regardless of when I woke up. I'd love it if I could get these four guys done. That'd be pretty cool. But the other thing that appeals to me, the DBA, is because the army is so damn small. I, I don't mind going and building an army that I'm not that I'm not in love with. Okay, so like if it if it took like a year for me to if it, if if this was a lot more troops to paint, then uh, it might take me like a year to paint one army or two years to paint one army, and uh, it's gonna I'm gonna give away two years of my freaking life putting them together. <laughs> so I, I would only be able to do like my favorites, you know, so um, I, I like the variety of, um, of, of being able to do more armies. So um, Kids are having a party out there. Sure sounds like it. Okay, so these guys are going to be fully metallic. We're going to do something a little different in the last two. This is time consuming what I'm doing, but it's well worth it. it uh, these guys really look the part when you're done with, uh, with this part.
I'm gonna have some more iced coffee too, just to just to make sure. We're gonna try to power on and knock out as much stuff as we can tonight, because I can't get shit done during a week. Too many responsibilities. Too many responsibilities. Okay. You got the chimera completely done. That's excellent. That's excellent. Excellent. Let's go give him a bloody nose tomorrow. How about that? <laughs> if they look good, they'll lose. That seems like the current trend. Can you come say goodbye to the beast? Yes, I can. Okay, well, it looks like I'm gonna go get my iced coffee a little early. What a zoo. Mmm. And that's not all my kids. <laughs> I am with child one. <laughs> Scared everybody off. <laughs> I don't blame them. Okay. All right. same thing with these guys.
Got some design like on his breastplate, almost like a, a V, upside down V, almost like a Lambda. Gothic armor is what this stuff is called. So what we're going to do is, on these last two guys, we're going to tinker with their helmets and we're going to paint their helmets because they did do that sometimes. So one guy is going to have a helmet that's split red and white, left to right. And another one we're going to, um, I don't know what we're going to do with the other one. We're going to do the left and we'll make this guy the, the red and white helmet guy and, and see where that takes us. I mean, I could always paint it metal and then go over it. Uh, with red and white, but uh, I did that with one of the Burgundians with white and uh, blue, and it looked really good. I really liked how that guy looked, so I believe he's on the general stand, uh, the dismounted general stand. We got a guy with a, uh, a pole arm. It might be actually this exact same figure, and uh, he's got a, a um, he's got a helmet that is split left and right, so... I'm going to go pull that figure, that stand, and make sure that that is the case. Because that turned out really well. And that was my first attempt to ever paint. Um, attempt to do a painted helmet that is actually a metallic thing. So uh, I've seen it in books, and sometimes it just doesn't look right. But, man, it looked really good in practice. Um, Thought it was pretty cool. I've got some knights in here somewhere. They're mounted knights. And I think I have them anyways. They're for, my, they're for like the uh, early Renaissance Germans and they have what they call the Maximilian armor. And they have, it's like fluted. Okay, so it's got some, uh, I believe it's vertical. It's got vertical fluting on them and they just look really weird. Um, I want to say they're minifix guys. Maybe, and maybe I don't have them. Maybe I just looked at them in the catalog and go, oh, these guys look just too stupid. I don't want to do that. You know, one of those things that just doesn't look right in practice. So, um, and when you, when you go to try to paint them. So I, I may have gotten them, I may not. That tells you I got a lot of figures where I don't even know who the hell I have. So, um,
Okay, so we're going to avoid this helmet completely on this one. We'll come back to this guy because we're going to do that split. Okay, um, and we'll see how that looks. So. I have to pull that Burgundian guy and um, and see what that looks like on that figure because that, that really turned out really well. So um, yeah, I don't think he's in. I don't think he's in the set here. I think I left the Burgundians here. Let me go get the command stand. I believe that's the the dismounted figure he's on. Okay, he's not in my display case, so he's in one of these trays here that I travel with. I haven't put him with it yet. Let's, let's go take a look at it. See which find which one he is. He's in the one with has all the Burgundians in there. Let's see, is it this one? Nope. Is it this one? Yes. Alright. Let's pull this whole tray up. And uh Talked about these before. This is the cooking trays that my figures travel in. They're just, uh, these are actually just cooking trays from Walmart. Let's zoom this out a little bit more. Ooh. Okay. And it's just a cooking. I don't, Amazon keeps stopping. It's not even on. Okay. This is uh, what they travel in. And they're all, I've got the, the base of my figures are all magnetized. And it worked well with this. So here's what they. Here's what they, they look like. So one of these guys has it's a dismounted general. See if I can find him here. Here he is. Huh. Just look for the massive flag. This guy right here. Jack doesn't fall on the damn ground. That would be bad. Yeah, this guy here. He's got a split helmet. This guy right here. So that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do with one of these guys. It's because we're not going to split it blue and white. We're going to split it red and white. Is that the same pose? It sure as hell is. Yeah. Turned out. That turned out well. Yeah, it's a dismounted uh, Charles the Bold. All right, well, we're gonna keep him out here just for a reminder. Let's paint his visor red, and then we'll alternate them all the same. So you don't have all four guys that look the same on there. Um, I mean, it'd be okay if they did, but you know, give them a little bit of variety there. So. Let's get back to position we were at before. All right. And uh, so this is the guy that we're going to, we're going to split his helmet. On the right side, we'll do white on the opposite side, just to kind of uh, do a little bit different. And then this guy will have his entire metal helmet. Uh, will be metal, except, um, let's see, could we do his helmet red? And the visor's helmet's still silver. Uh, I don't know yet. Let's, uh, let me think about that. Let me think about that. I think we'll just do the visor red. Make it a little bit different. I'm um, just trying to mix things up a little bit so you have some variety, so. Um, okay, so let's go back and do the, do the armor on this guy, except for the actual visor of the helmet.
Hello, don't crash the car. <laughs> Ends on the road. <laughs> you guys got a long drive, so. Oh, okay, well, you don't want to listen to me, Kennedy, because this is going to make uh, NPR seem exciting. <laughs> Finish up this stuff here. Yeah, because I've seen painted helmets and stuff on... Uh, on these type of uh, dismounted uh, knight type figures, but not uh, not any other pieces of armor and stuff. It's usually just the. You know, if I don't like how the visor looks. I'll just repaint it, no big deal. That's the advantage of painting so thin uh, with the layers of paint is you're not really covering up any detail. So you literally could go over it and it wouldn't be a problem at all. Yeah, so all we're going to leave is just a little wide. And um, see how that turns out. We'll do the split helmet first, though. Ah, look at that. I'm even talking about it and I forget to do it. That's no big deal. Maybe you got to do his visor so I don't forget. Can't take me anywhere. This is the bridge you don't jump off of. Ah, oh crap, I forgot to, not to jump off of it. Now, I don't think I've painted these figures before. I've, I've painted these figures before in a Burgundian, uh, also in the uh, French Ordnance Army, and I did not have Nolma oil at that time. But I figure I'll give it a shot since I have it here. And um, just see if they they look even better. One second, I gotta take care of one thing.
Okay. <laughs> so we're not gonna finalize necessarily all the figures that we're gonna be painting. We're just kind of wing this a little bit because we've got we got war wagons coming. There's gonna be some guys we're gonna have on foot next to the war wagons. We've got these uh, we've got these two exactly um, that I don't have know exactly uh, where they're gonna fit into the deep night stands, but you know all that stuff. Uh, we're just gonna we put together the spearmen and uh, the stand of the blades and uh, the skirmishers, and we're just kind of take them as we go. So I actually looked up the um, this figure here for the uh, the light Hungarian light horseman. I looked it up in the um, the illustration that they're based on, and it's armies of. Um, uh, Armies of Medieval Europe. I think it's called Medieval Europe. Armies of Armies of the Middle Ages. That's what it is. Armies of the Middle Ages figure. Uh, this Hungarian horse archer. And it says that he has a white cloak that's kind of folded back over a, um, a pink tunic. Yeah, we're not going to give him a pink tunic because that's not... Well, we may. I mean, it depends if that's going to work with the colors of the... Of the rest of the army, maybe it will work. Maybe it will be like a faded red. Um, maybe that will work after all. But um, you know, um, I, sometimes when things don't make sense the way they are, you don't have to follow them exactly to the letter of the law. So, so as you need to be. So anyhow, and I think these guys, these hussars, are like a a blue. Uh, garment that they have on so we'll see how that works. we'll worry about those details as we come to them right now we're just <clears throat> painting the guys that just come to you naturally and uh, you don't have to make any difficult decisions you know so okay did we get done with this guy or we still have a little bit of metal oh we still have a little bit of metal to do okay We'll still, little, still got a little bit of metal of this do, and then we'll pull out the red and start uh, getting fancy. So that'll give them a little bit of oomph. And then when we put them on the stand, we're not going to put those two guys next to each other. We're going to put them probably in position one and three or something like that. We'll put a normal guy in between them to make them stand out a little bit more. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so this guy here. Let's drop the null oil on these guys and then we'll worry about painting those details. How about that? Let's grab the null oil. And everybody's going to get the treatment. We'll do this guy last since he's freshest, the freshest paint on him. Well, this should be able to go over it fine without any issues. We'll grab this same brush, should be fine. So, fancy name for a wash. Okay, so. I wish this little cap would stay open, damn it. 
Well, let's not uh, let's not get too fancy and flip this thing upside down and have bigger issues than what we bargained on. Got him done. Next. I don't know what the hell a Nuln is, but this is the oil from them. I'm sure there's probably some Games Workshop Citadel fluff backstory, so. Just gives it some depth. If I ever paint some like black writers, R E I T E R S, I will definitely be using something like this to darken their darken their armor up because that's uh, yeah, but that's from Renaissance period. They're definitely uh, later than this, but. Now we'll have to clean these figures up a little bit when we're done, when this null and all dries, like say tomorrow morning. Well, not tomorrow morning. I, I can't get any painting done in the mornings and not tomorrow evening. How about next time I sit down and paint? I may have to clean, do some cleanup on them uh, and make these uh, edges. Uh, they won't, this, this darken them quite a bit. That won't be, uh, that won't be what, what we're doing. We won't be leaving them that way. And then this guy, we will do the helmet. We're just leaving the, the visor alone. Visor is going to have special treatment done to it. So I don't know exactly what's in here. But it's not just a simple wash because it doesn't recede uh, like washes normally do. Washes you'll normally put it, pull it some uh, put it somewhere and it'll it'll have capillary action stuff that happens to it and it ends up looking great when you put it down. And then you wake up in the morning it looks like crap. So um, I don't really do washes anymore because of, of those issues. Okay, now let's go back to the guy that reds out. Now there's a couple of reds, they're almost all the same. I'm going to use them as a base for painting some of this stuff. One of them is this, is this the flat red or the vermilion? Flat red. There's a vermilion. Also known as just red. And I got one more. This one's called Scarlet. And they're just slightly different. Slightly different from each other.
the one that has the visor by itself, I'm gonna use the most orange one. And that one looks like it's a flat red. That doesn't make any sense. It should be the scarlet one. Well, we're gonna paint the scarlet one. That's the that's the visor guy we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and paint his visor right now. Okay, and then we'll use a different red to split between the red and the white. Just a tiny little bit different. This one should be tiny little bit orange to it. Right? And this is a tiny little area that we're painting because it's just literally just a visor. All right, we still got some of this stuff here. Yeah. Oh. Two drops should be enough. Okay. All right, so we're gonna mix this a color. Let me get some black in here. And we're gonna paint the whole visor in this color. We're just gonna paint the visor. We're gonna leave the center slit black. Leave the center slip black. There's no point in painting it and then have to come in there and drop some null oil in the middle of it. You could just ignore it. Okay, that's all we're gonna do on that color. Now this dries really fast, so we'll come in and we'll mix some more red in here, less black. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. Okay. Then we're going to do this color straight. Okay, this is what we're looking like. Now, I don't know how well you can see it there, but it looks good from here. And remember, he's gonna also have a pole arm that's gonna have some wood and stuff on there. So he should uh, contrast there nicely. Now, we are gonna bring it up a little bit. Now, we're not gonna add white because I don't want this, I don't want this to be a warm visor. Okay, so we're going to add, uh, let's add yellow to it. Okay, we're gonna just need a little drop of yellow, kind of like that little drop that's there. That one might actually even be alive. Nope, she dried out. It didn't take long for a little drop like that to dry out. So we're just gonna drop another little drop of yellow. You need very, very little, get the job done and um, give it a little bit of highlighting there. So we're gonna come in, it's still alive here. Okay. And a little bit more. Okay, we're going to leave this well alone. Okay. Now we're going to switch reds. I don't know that it makes much of a difference, but I have different reds. By God, I'm going to use them all. So um, we're going to use the one that's called 
flat red on this other guy. Now, this guy has the split helmet. We have white on this side and then blue on that one. So we're gonna move the white to the to the starboard side on the figure, so to speak. So we're going to, um, just to be different. Oh yeah. See how different that is? That's, that's, this one's a lot more orange than that one. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get some black over here. All right, now the split on the helmet. Right, from point to point. So let's try to work that on that, getting that centered now. I want the white on the outside, okay, so. And we're gonna have to tinker where that center is because that's sometimes a little difficult to get. Okay, and that's the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get that line in the, exactly where we want it, and then we'll build it up from there. So we're gonna stop. We're gonna get, is our white okay? Or is, is she dead from this morning? Ah, it's died. All right, I should be playing. <clears throat> now. This is white we're talking about. So we don't need to go super, super dark. Now the point looks like it's about right there. So let's see what that looks like. I think that looks pretty good. Um, we'll go in there and then we're gonna go ahead and drop a black line in between the two and have a nice split between the two colors for contrast. Yeah, it's, it's like uh, pretty much spot on. Let's clean this up a little bit. drop a line in between the two. 
So the hell does that mean? That means we're gonna mix up. We're gonna put a thin line in between the two colors. See if a hard stop between them. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and bring the uh, let's go ahead and bring the white up. Doesn't really matter which one I do first. Go ahead and bring the white up. Okay. And then we're going to do it again. Okay. Now we're going to go to the other side. We're going to do the red. And that red, we're actually are going to lighten up with, with white. We're not going to lighten it up with yellow. So that way the two reds will look different from each other on purpose. Just start a little bit extra variety, you know. That's the thing about the wet palette is I still have the mix here wet. I didn't have to mix it up from scratch. So that's where it helps you. Saving your time. To do that sort of thing. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to add more red to it.
going to go straight to this color right here. All right, well, we have a split helmet. Let's see if we can get something on here. Resolution here is not the best. Okay. Now we're going to lighten it up with a tiny little bit of a touch of white, tiny little bit. Maybe not that tiny. There we go. Now be careful because it starts going pink in a heartbeat. Okay, there we have it. Split white and red. Yeah, so these are significantly different reds, these guys next to each other. Well, they're not going to be next to each other on purpose. Okay, this is the scarlet. Highlighted with yellow. And this is the, uh, what do you say, it was flat red, highlighted with white. Yeah. Cool. Cool. And what I was talking about them being, you know, I'll probably have like this guy on one end and then a standard guy and then this guy over here and then this guy over there. You know, so you've got some kind of variety there. You know. All right. Now. Tomorrow's going to be six degrees warmer than today. That sucks. What is the high? Uh, Seventy-five. Okay. Well, may not too bad. Maybe not be too bad for a um, for um, a game night. Woo! Okay. We're gonna make it. Let's see. We've got to paint. Um, we've got to paint some handles here of these pole arms, and um, these two guys will not have the same axe handle, the same uh, pole axe handle, because they're the same pose. So we're gonna do one in. Um, what time is it? Nine ten. I think we're I think we're actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop right here. Okay. We're gonna pick these guys up and we'll start doing the handles when we come back. But we're able to get these guys off the ground and uh wait for that null oil to be nice and uh nice and dry on there before we tinker with it again. So all right folks. Well until next time, we got a couple hours on this one, and uh we'll catch you guys next time. See ya.